Today's show is brought to you by My Patriot Supply Storable Food. Visit preparewithk2d4.com today. You'll save $100 off a full four week supply of emergency food from My Patriot Supply. That's preparewithk2d4.com today. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, planet Earth and beyond, welcome to another great episode of Talk is Cheap. We're going to talk about Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. What's going on there? Stay tuned and find out. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pete Hobleib, and welcome to another episode of Talk is Cheap. As always, uh, right over to my right, we've got the star of the show. Hey, hey. well, co-star. Yeah, uh, co-star. Don't, well, stall, don't oh, sell yourself you're, short, Pete. You're so <laughs> modest. Mr. Dan Hofeld, how you doing, sir? Pretty good. Episode 154 today. Wow. Can you believe 154. that? 154. And some extra sprinkles on top here and there. Yeah, that's what right. we do. Yeah, that's how we do it. Wow, 154 episodes. What did I come in at about maybe episode 20 or 30? I mean, you had started it with a different I think you group. were under 20, somewhere in 15. Really? So, you think yeah. so? Yeah, I know you had started it, kicked, uh, it, kicked, it, kicked it off with a... I remember when we looked at it, I was like, I was surprised that you started as early as you did with us. So yeah, yeah. You've, you've been yeah. hanging in there. You're yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, besides I'm, me, you're the longest <laughs> one yeah. sticking with <laughs> I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the fool here that hasn't <laughs> cut, cut loose and ran away. But, uh, you know, it's been fun and we talk about some super interesting stuff, so... I guess uh, I guess you you stuck with me for a little longer, Dan. That's right. I want to remind those folks: don't forget to subscribe to our audio podcast. It's been going up quite a bit. That's important. That's the backup. If we get censored, we go down. We're going to be over there. Also, LBRY and BitChute. Very important. Otherwise, I guess we'll just see you in the next lifetime. Yeah, audio podcasts are good because Dan and I both have faces for radio, man. So I think it'd be a lot easier. Like. I could stay more engaged with you. And well, I, can I wouldn't have to, you know. Look good? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if I'm looking good, but hey, I put on a coat with a collar. You know, I'm trying to gussy it up yeah, a little bit Yeah, it looks here. good. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, well, Dano, uh, what do you know about Washington, D.C., District of Columbia? Do, uh, you know, have you picked up any on the conspiracy side I, yeah, on I know that? quite a few things, though. Well, number one, it's a lot of the cabal's control, of course, and you got these evil entities controlling the government, but you also have symbolism with, like, the owl on the layouts mm-hmm. and all that stuff, the the, the uh, obelisk. Yeah, There's the a lot ob- of stuff yep, there. Washington Monument, right? Yep. Yeah, that'd be the, the obelisk there. Uh, well, good. So, yeah, so you're somewhat familiar with the conspiracy side of things. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've personally come across it here and there. I've read some stuff. I haven't really looked into it. And uh, normally for the show, um, I'll look on the topic suggestions. I'll pick one. But th- this time, I don't even know why. what possessed me. I'm like, you know what? I want to do a show about Washington, <laughs> D.C. Not to go off topic, but when are you going to do the, uh, the sh- what is it, the sheep uh, sheep head one or whatever the hell it was? The- oh, was that from Anthony? Yeah. Oh, I was, you know, it's funny <laughs> you say that. And Anthony, if he, if he's watching, and he, he does watch these shows on occasion, I apologize. Uh, I got to touch base and refresh my memory. <laughs> that, that's on the topic list, though, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. it is. I that's why I'm surprised you didn't grab it. Uh-huh. Uh, you know what? I did promise Anthony I was going to do it. So, well, that's just how it goes, Dano. You know, I'm a flaky guy. I have a free spirit. I I I, I roll with the tumbleweeds, man. So just uh, just FYI, if you haven't figured that out yet. Um. So anyway, back to the topic. I did yeah. put a little effort into <laughs> instead of the sheep head one from Anthony. I think it was a sheep head or something. I, 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 <laughs> I can't remember. It's sheep something. Sheep, uh, what? She, was it like sheepzilla or something? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Anthony. Uh, okay, moving on. So um, I wanted to dig a little bit in, and you kind of summed it up right. So the conspiracy behind Washington, D.C. is that it's like, you know, it's 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 a district which is not part of the United States that is controlled by foreign entities, okay? And uh, that uh, all of the... Um, trials and tribulations of of the American people, and the reason why we're kept under the thumb of the government is is because this you know small group of elites is calling the shots. 
I don't think that that's a, such a far stretch from Dan. A lot, a lot of stuff that you and I talk about that you know I have mentioned a lot, and and I'm a I'm a firm believer that we've got a small group of elite folks on the planet that are calling the shots globally, man, and do not have our best interest in mind. So anyway, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, indicators point to Washington D.C. Say, hey, you know, let's look at that. You know, it's illegal. It's treasonous. What's going on there? Da da da. So that's what I want to kind of get into a little bit. Fair warning, there's a little bit of, I will say, uh, history being discussed. (laughs) Keep in mind... Come again. The winners write the history books, okay? Oh, yeah. So when I'm going to go through uh, these uh, chronological sequence of events, just keep in mind that the the people writing this are the winners of any (laughs) battles that were going on, okay? And, Dan, I know that you are well aware that uh, narratives need to be evaluated and where they're coming from and, and who's uh, giving the narrative. Uh, U.S. history is no different, okay? Yeah. Um, you, you have to be very, very um, mindful and skeptical of what it is. But I'm going to uh, kind of go through some of what the history of the District of Columbia is, and then I'm going to go into a little bit about uh, more on the conspiracy side and what's being said out there about it, okay? Okay. Okay, so step one. Excuse me, COVID. Uh, The Resident Act of 1790 is where it all started, okay? Uh, It was titled, An Act for Establishing the Temporary and Permanent Seat of the Government of the United States. Okay? Uh, It basically, it created a federal district that would become the capital of the U.S., and it was signed by Mr. George Washington. Hmm. The first president. So, you know, uh, 1776, you're familiar with that date? Oh, yeah, the right? best date ever. Right? So, uh, 14 years later, George Washington is creating now a separate district outside of the, the United States that's going to be the seat of the government. Okay. Did it get into why he decided to do that? Yes, and I'm going to talk about okay. that in a minute, okay? <laughs> uh, so... Really, when we talk about the District of Columbia, uh, D.C., where it really took a turn for the the worse, okay, was uh, in the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871, also referred to as the Act of 1871. Um, and this formed a separate entity. Uh, what it really did was uh, it formed a separate government uh, in a 10 mile, a, a 10 square mile parcel of land uh, that revoked the individual charters of Washington and Georgetown, the cities of Washington and Georgetown, and created a new ter- territorial government for the entire district. So the District of Columbia, created in 1790, was comprised of multiple cities, okay? In 1871, it said, you know what, we're going to just create a territorial government to control this 10, 10 square mile parcel of land, okay? That one was signed into law by Ulysses S. Grant in February of 1871. Uh, a quick side note, uh, it was, it's been amended uh, multiple times since the act passed. Actually, the original act was repealed in 1874. So the, the, the act of 1871, which I found is what a, a ton of this conspiracy-based stuff is pointing at, as, hey, it, we, it formed a separate corporation. It's a corporation. The United States now is a separate entity. Um, that particular act was repealed in 1874, but then amended and, and tweaked since then. And actually, when you go through the, the chronological order of it, it's been tweaked like eight eight times, I think, <laughs> since the inception. I mean, it was, it was being tw- tweaked in the 80s and 90s still, this act was. Um, but anyway, you asked... Why? What was the reason? Why did they need to, do, to yeah. create a district, right? So because they put a, put themselves above the laws. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so at the time, very astute, Dan. <laughs> so uh, at the time, the Federalists, which was a political group back then, right? We don't hear about the Federalists much much anymore. Uh, said that the uh, exclusive legislative jurisdiction over the seat of government. The district was necessary so that the federal government would not be dependent on a state for security in case of mutiny or disruption. Okay, so basically it said we need to create a separate governing entity because 
we're afraid that at some point the rest of the country is going to mutiny or disrupt us and <laughs> overthrow us and we're not going to be protected. <clears throat> so basically what they did is said, you know what, we're creating the separate ones so that if you guys are pissed off at us, you can't do anything about it if we don't, if we don't want to. Okay. That was the reason behind creating this district is to have a separate governing, uh, body that we didn't rely on basically the, uh, you know, the people's opinion and the will of the people to, to tell us how to operate. So okay? what, what does that get into more like, uh, like they got, um, because if people revolt, they're going to go to Washington and right. blow it up. So but it's see, like, how but, does that But help? see, now Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, yeah. makes the, and I'm going to air quote, laws of the land, and they control, what do they control? They control the executive, judicial, and legislative branches, which then include the military. So military law will come from the District of Columbia. So if everybody in the United States says, we're mad at you and we demand you get overthrown, it doesn't matter unless the District of Columbia agrees to it and and makes those changes within uh, their, uh, uh, I guess, laws and systems to do it. So basically, it's like they can thumb their noses at the people and say, ha ha, D.C. doesn't it doesn't agree with you and we'll do what we want, which surprise, surprise. Right. Isn't that what we're experiencing today? <laughs> They've created their own health care systems. They're, they're following their own sets of laws, right? And apparently, they're above the law of, from what we're, what, what we're held to, you and right, I and yeah. stuff, right? Um, yeah, they got their own health care, so that's for sure. Yeah, right? So, so that's, that's part of what's coming out of D.C. So anyway, uh, fast forward to today. Uh, from that uh, original 10-square-mile tract of land that the eight, Act of 1871 created, D.C. is now 68 square miles. <laughs> All right, so we're about seven times uh, more area. Um, here's a little side note that I just added in. The population is 702,000, okay? It has a $15 billion annual budget for 702,000 people to operate in the District of Columbia. That equates to $21,000 per person. Is just, their annual just budget DC area. just in DC? Oh my god! And that's what their annual budget is to support everybody. Everybody gets twenty one thousand dollars to support. So, uh, looking at Wisconsin, and you folks at home can do this in your own state. This is all public record. Just do a quick uh, uh, duck duck go search, and you'll find it. Um, Wisconsin has a forty billion dollar budget and five point eight million people. And what that comes out to is about $6,800 per person. So you're looking at about three times uh, the budget, you know, in D.C. So already the money's talking over there, yeah. okay? Um, I, w I will say, and I don't know if I... It, I don't know if I put this in my notes or not, but it was something I came across with. Uh, there's this... Um, uh, kind of a perception that uh, folks in D.C. don't pay taxes, okay? Um, and actually, when I was doing my, my digging, I found that to not only be false, but actually people that live in D.C. pay more taxes per capita than anybody else. So it kind of equates to this $21,000. I bet you it's not cheap there. That's <laughs> no, for sure. no, and I, but I bet you that the, the, the people aren't paying an extra, you know, uh, what does that come out to, $14,000 a year in taxes than, than we are. Maybe they are. I don't know. I didn't look that deep into it. But where where this misconception comes of them not paying taxes is that the, the taxes they raise gets given to Congress, and then Congress then reappropriates funds to run the city. So it looks like if you look at, well, Congress gives D.C. all the money to operate their stuff. Well, that's true. But what you don't see is that the taxes going in uh, go to Congress. Mm. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Excuse me. The COVID's got me pretty good tonight. China. Um, actually, that's smoker's cough, just for folks that want to know. Uh, so anyway, um, Act of 1871... Which also increases your chances. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm high risk, right? And I'm getting older. And I drink. And I don't exercise. I eat fairly well, though. So that's good. Uh, Acts of the 41st Congress, Section 34, Session 3, Chapter 62. The Act of 1871. An act to provide a government for the District of Columbia. Okay. And here's uh, an excerpt from that. And oh, I see Dan's uh, got some of it pulled up. Uh, all part of the territory of the U U.S. included within the limits of the District of Columbia 
B, and the same is hereby created into a government by the name of District of Columbia, which by name it is hereby constituted a body corporate of municipal purposes. But then it goes on to say, and I'm paraphrasing here, it, and exercise all other powers of a municipal corporation not inconsistent with the Constitution and the law of the United States. So what it did in 1871 is it created the District of Columbia as a municipal corporation. Dan, you ever wonder why it was called the District of Columbia? How did Columbia get in there? Actually, no, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But I, did, I, <laughs> I thought you yeah, had. No, <laughs> but I've got uh, uh, one person's Colombian, take. Uh, Beans uh, for coffee. There. Coffee, Juan uh, Valdez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I didn't find a good answer to that, uh, but I'm going to talk about one answer to it later. What always pissed me off as a kid was how they call that Washington and D.C., and then you got Washington State. It was confusing as a kid. Yeah, yeah, right. And you know what's interesting is that we've got this— the White House is in Washington, D.C., which is not part of the United States. Hmm. Isn't that weird? That is weird. It's a separate district. Okay. So what well, I they were talking about, not to get too far <coughs> no, off track, but about making it its own state now or something yeah, like that? Yeah, people are, are compa- campaigning that, oh, what did they call it? There's there's a, a an area where all of the U.S. Uh, federal buildings are. Uh, oh, what did they call it? I forget. Anyway, but uh, people of the District of Columbia have been uh, for years campaigning to create a separate state that does not include that. So they would basically shrink the the size of this foreign entity or non-U.S. you know uh, territory, um, and then create the 51st state. Um, mm-hmm. I ran across that. I didn't did not include it in this, but um, did run across it. Um, so anyway, uh, quick definition: municipal corporation, right? Uh, an incorporated political subdivision of a state that is composed of the citizens of a designated geographic area and which performs certain state functions on a local level and possesses such powers as are conferred upon it by the state. So Congress basically in this 1871 said district of Columbia, we are giving you full control to oversee and operate the United States of America, the rest of the states, right? Because they conferred that power to a local level, all right? Um, One thing to keep in mind is that a corporation is an entity capable of conducting business. Thanks for caring about people. How many times have you heard, we're going to run America like a business? We're going to run, I'm a candidate, I'm going to run America like a business. Well, newsflash, America is being run by a business, like a business right right now, okay? Well, it's... Part of capitalism. Though. Yeah, right. Yep. And, uh, you know, businesses uh, uh, are created all the time and they make the people in charge lots of money, run up huge debts and then go bankrupt. OK, so that scares me. If we're running the uh, country like a business, um, you know, not the best. <clears throat> so anyway, um, a lot of this conversation uh, that I c- came across was like. The U.S. is the United States is now a corporation, and look to your birth certificate. It's it's a bond, right? When you and I are born, we're issued a social security number. We're given a birth certificate, and with that is human capital. Okay. When we're born and we get a uh, birth certificate, the powers that be, uh, birth certificates apparently are traded on the stock market. Well. Because there's value behind the money that you're going to make in your lifetime, Dan. There's this thing, too, where this is, goes into that uh, straw man thing about that people can use their, uh, was it the social security number or the birth certificate number for, like, paying their bills. And they, like some people, like, typed it in, and I guess it didn't get rejected or something like that. Really? So, so I don't know how all that works. I'm but, not sure. It's, it's a little scary, yeah. though, isn't it? So or they, they suddenly garnish your wages when you <laughs> when you retire and try to draw social security. They just get it back. You know, they say, "Oh yeah, you you did this." Um, but it, it's interesting because um, that's a lot of the justification why we can run up this huge debt, these trillions of dollars of debt, because they look at it and say, "Hey." Uh, Look at all of these people out in the workforce. The future taxes, the future economic, you know, impact that they have, and people are oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll lend you ten bucks now if I know that uh, after you get your business running or you, you know, you hit your 
you know, profitable profitability, you're going to give me 20 back. You know, I'll give you 10 bucks now and in, and in 20 years, you give me 20 back. That's fine. If you do that enough, you know, you just got to do the waiting game. You get a bunch of money. And that's kind of how this human capital and human value is, is, is being traded at this high level. Um, I, again, I, I didn't include, but I ran across a website. I, I want to say like for the national debt and somebody out there with a calculator is going to totally call me on this because I can't remember offhand, but it was something like every, every individual is responsible for like $27,000 of the national debt or something. If you look at it, I, I could, I could do the math quick, but um, I thought that was a pretty interesting way to look at it. You think about $3 trillion, but we've got 3 million, 300 million people in the United States, right? What does that divide out to, to what everybody really owes the national debt, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and boy, I'd like to be able to like uh, pay down that, and then in five years, ten years, have that all paid off, and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. But well, I don't think it's really our responsibility. No. I've often thought that we should assign the national debt to one person and then kill them, and, and then <laughs> okay, it's all wiped out. Then take out a life insurance. Yeah, policy. Right. yeah, and then kill them. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> moving on. Um, in uh, twenty-eight U.S. Code three thousand two. So uh, go on your. Uh, you know, your um, influence machine and type in 28 U.S. Code 3002. Under definition, this is a U.S. uh, code, okay? The United States means, uh, very first definition A, a federal corporation. Well, that's nice, ain't it? So right in our U.S. legal codes, it defines the United States as a federal corporation. Mm. It is not a democratic republic. They don't define it as that anymore. Constitutional anywhere. republic. Or whatever. They don't define it as a republic. They don't define it as a democracy. They, don't, they define it as a federal corporation. Okay. Uh, it's also defined as an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the United States or an instrumentality of the United States. So... What does that mean? Some federal corporations that we already have, and this was surprising to me, uh, you know, it's uh, the, by definition, a federal corporation is an entity created by the U.S. Congress to perform a public service. So the United States was created by the Congress to form a pu- perform a public service of governing the United States, right? The Congress creates a federal corporation by passing a law that defines the size, purpose, structure, and authority of the entity, Examples of a federal corporation, U.S. Postal, postal Service, uh, the federal, uh, the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and here's the surprising one, Amtrak is a federal corporation. So that means it's it's a government service, right? Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's it's basically. Uh, is Amtrak bankrupt like the postal service? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's it was created to perform a public service. Okay. So I thought Amtrak was interesting. I thought that was huh. all private, but it isn't. I guess it makes sense, right? You know, um, because it's uh, is so overreaching through the whole the whole country. So uh, you know, little brief history about uh, Washington D.C. How it was created. Um, some of the U.S. codes that are out there, the definitions. And we got to be a little worried, right? Because we talk about corporations, corporate America, evil, uh, you know, uh, unfettered capitalism, all that stuff. Okay. So right now at this point, it's telling me that, okay, at some point the United States now turn into some sort of money making scheme for somebody, some group, some group of people, right? It's a corporation. (laughs) It doesn't have our best interests in mind anymore. It's it's there to further the corporation's Did goals. Did you ever look like um, what it? What's the wording for other countries? Like, do is there like a corporation too like that? Um, you know, I didn't I didn't look to see if other countries did similar things. What I really tried to do, uh, because there was some indications that the that the Act of eighteen seventy one specifically was driven by. Um, foreign entities to kind of try to take over, you know, uh, and, and get their foothold in America and stuff. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that coming up, um, right after our break, because I've got a note here, Dan, that says it's time to take a break. What do you got for us? All right. Today's show was brought to you by none other than our friends over at my Patriot supply folks, my Patriot supply. 
urge you to visit preparewithk2d4.com and build your emergency food supply today. And I was really happy when these guys contacted me because I want to give stuff that you guys can actually use. This is great. It's a no-brainer to have a life insurance policy. You can eat this. I mean, it's yeah, it's going to go bad after 25 years, but you can eat it. It's there. You know, not, not doing anybody any harm here. We got a sales here. Four-week emergency food supply here. This is 2,000 plus calories a day with 284 servings. They got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and drinks. Save $100 today. Ooh, and drinks? Do you have to add your own water? Yeah, uh, I've had this I'm guessing so. storable food with mine. Uh, that I just finished up. Actually, I still have some of the drink stuff left. This ain't this, but it was a different company. I think I do want to order from these guys, though, and give it a try. That's $10 too. a day, Dan. Mix it Four with water, weeks. mix it up. $10 you, a day. Even use a blender. Three meals. That's a pretty good deal. Free shipping and handling. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, folks, I just want to say, too, you know, you look at something like this. This is not just for the tinfoil hat-wearing preppers, okay, like you, you might think. Um, every day you can... You can find an instance of power outages for days and weeks. You know, if you're not looking to stock up, you're, you don't have to fill up your garage with these buckets of food, okay, and have a 10 years supply of food, okay? But do yourself a favor. We've got fires. We've got other natural disasters. We've got riots, stuff where services drop, okay? This is a good way to get you down the road. I can't I can't recommend enough. If you, if you, if you can't look in your house right now and find three to six months worth of food, you're not doing yourself any favor. This is a quick, dirty, easy way to get you, uh, you know, uh, some quite literally life-saving uh, sustenance if you need it. Yeah, and you talk about uh, power loss. I mean, your freezer is going to go down, all that stuff. So it's good to have yep. some uh, dry, storable food. Yep, something that does not require electricity to maintain, and this is what it is. Now, Dan, uh, we are patiently awaiting some samples from the, uh, this company, and when they arrive, we're going to uh, give it the old taste test on the show. Yeah, sure I will. Think, I, think we're, I think I'm making that decision right now for us. Yeah, just make sure to go to preparewithk2d4.com. I also have the link in the description here. Click on that. That helps support the show, and we support... Yeah, them as website, well, My yeah, Patriot uh, Supply. Website, website prepare. Uh, prepare with K2D4.com. Prepare with K2D4.com. Okay. There is some talks, or there was some verbiage in uh, the Act of 1871 that talked about, and I'm quoting here, the executive power shall be vested in a governor of the, of the District of Columbia who shall be appointed by the president. That's chapter 62, section 2, okay? So that really piqued my interest there. I'm like, wait a minute. When was the last time I heard of about a, the president appointing a governor of the District of Columbia, right? Because every four years or eight years or whatever that is, we'd get a new governor, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, on a side note, uh, I guess before that, remember I talked about this act was repealed in 1874 and amended uh, multiple times since then. Full disclosure, I did not read every single uh, act that amended this, but somewhere along the line, this requirement was dropped, okay, Dan? No longer is the president <laughs> right. appointing a governor of the District of Columbia. So, and that you couldn't find that when that was, huh? Yeah. No, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. Uh, maybe somebody out there That's can. That's interesting. Um, so, but what I did find is that uh, district, the District of Columbia remained under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Congress. Remember, that's how it was originally developed, that the Congress would uh, control and appoint and do all this stuff with the District of Columbia. It remained under the sole jurisdiction of the U.S. Congress until 1973. So, a hundred years later, they changed it. And then... They passed the 1973 District of Columbia Home Rule, okay? And part of this was that now uh, the District of Columbia would be overseen by four congressional subcommittees rather than Congress itself. So they created four uh, congressional subcommittees, and they can mod do things like modifying budgets. They can annul laws. So if the District of Columbia comes out... Uh, with a law that these uh, subcommittees don't like, they can just say, nope, you're not going to pass it. All right, not going to do it. Um, and But still, to this day, the president is in charge of the District of Columbia's court systems, okay? So this is interesting, isn't it, Dano? You've got the District of Columbia that houses the, the White House, it houses Congress, it's all encapsulated in this district. The president 
is in charge of the District of Columbia's court systems. Isn't that a little bit of the the fox watching the hen house there? What is what is the court system? The what part of it is he in charge of? All of it. All of it. Yeah. So you're talking like you mean the Supreme Court? Well, the D- District of Columbia is a separate district. They have their own separate court systems and stuff. And the president is in charge. Of, he appoints people. He can make adjustments if needed and stuff like that. Okay. So if you're within the District of Columbia and commit a crime, okay, the District of Columbia then. Uh, Okay, some folks are going to call me on this. A lot of cases can get prosecuted in federal court as well, outside of the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. But within the District of Columbia, the president controls those courts. So in a sense, right, hey, I can get away with a lot of stuff because I can control the courts, make my own laws, and or make adjustments if things are getting dicey. I see. So that's where... Again, this whole District of Columbia thing gets really murky and dark because there are some federal uh, cases that get tried for crimes committed within the District of Columbia, but not all of them. That's right. Uh, Trump does talk about appointing all these judges. Mm -hmm. That's what I, yeah. Yeah, right. right. So anyway, okay. So I started looking into, okay, so who who in the heck is the governor of uh, District of Columbia, and how was that determined? <laughs> so D- Dan Scott pulled up. Okay, I went right to USA uh, Government, uh, district USA.gov, District of Columbia page, okay? And right here it says Governor Mayor Muriel Brown. <laughs> okay, so basically what they've done here is they have, through an elect- electoral process, uh, elected a mayor who then by default becomes the governor. <laughs> Okay, is that double the pay? Too? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so uh, so I'm looking at this. It's probably because it's too small for. Yeah, click on click on Mayor Muriel Bowser here. Okay, have you ever heard of her? Yeah, because he kind of got in a tiff, or she got in a tiff with Trump. So you can close that. Or, you don't need to receive. Um. So, so okay. So here's our governor. Uh, of the District of Columbia, which uh, allegedly, right, is is going to be making, helping assist with the laws of the land. And her own mission statement states that she's just concerned about the people of District of Columbia. So there's something here. This is just basically a figurehead. This is like nothing. This is a puppet. I don't even know. It's not even a puppet. Well, she had a say with uh, BLM being able to paint on the the road. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big decision so, I mean, making that's there. That's what I'm man. saying. It's just it's uh So she's completely focused on on the citizens of District of Columbia and what's going on there. So uh so is the District of Columbia still the seat of our government? What's going on? You know, this is the governor that's supposed to make the call, uh, call the shots, but they don't. So So who's calling the shots, man? Who's calling the shots? The District right of Columbia governor is and I quote, per the Act of 1871, is exactly man. They created an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia based upon the the, the Residents Act of 1790, which was establishing a permanent seat of the government of the United States in the District of Columbia. It's confusing, Dan. It I is. think it's completely I, lost. Design. I think it's completely lost in translation. What the hell is supposed to be going on there, man? And who does what? Okay, so who really is calling the shots, right? Apparently, it's still coming from Washington, D.C., right? That's where the head of our government is. But the District of Columbia is not calling the shots. So who is? (laughs) This is where we get into the real conspiratorial stuff of it, okay? And I've had a heck of a time finding... Really tracing back this, I've, I, I went to multiple websites, and the further you go down the rabbit hole, you have people claiming different things that I couldn't substantiate. But in a nutshell, this is, I'm going to summarize this. I don't necessarily believe this, okay? I don't find it hard to believe, but I'm not saying I don't believe it, all right? I, I am saying I don't necessarily believe it, but I don't also necessarily find it hard to believe but this is where it's going to get a little bit out there, okay, and what we had talked about earlier. Okay. That's what we do. Yep, right. Yeah, that's, what, that's kind of what we're here for, right? So the That's re- the whole goal? The real, crea- the real people behind the creation of the District of Columbia. Um, one thing to keep in mind, in 1866, 
four, five years before the, the 1871 act was passed, the country was in $2.76 billion in debt. Okay. In 1866 terms, that's an awful lot of money, right? Interesting side note, Andrew Jackson was the only president in U.S. history to drive the national debt to zero. The only one. And what do you know about Andrew Jackson? He was against the banks. He and, wanted the death of the Federal Reserve. And in many conversations, he has pointed to as the worst president in U.S. history because he was raucous. He uh, was an outsider. <laughs> he, he had parties in the White House. Mm. The only I, I had a huge eye opening moment there. The reason why people hate Andrew Jackson, I'm not, I don't want to get into the whole racist aspect of him, but the the reason why the elite hated Andrew Jackson is because the elite were, were being controlled by the banks, and suddenly the United States didn't owe anybody any money. <laughs> okay, now by the end of his term, he went back into debt, and we've been been there ever since. But I was like, oh, well, that's why everybody hates the history books. Hate Andrew Jackson because he said, "F you to the banks. I'm paying oh, off yeah. your debts, yeah. man." You know. So anyway, something to keep in mind when people mention Andrew Jackson. Okay, uh, there there's a little bit more. Remember, the winners write the history books. That's right. That's right. right. Banks won. Okay, continuing. So, uh, exactly. according to my internet sources, and I'll mm-hmm. say that tongue in cheek because there was not a lot of sources provided here other than uh, commentary by folks. That's a true story. Yes. Uh, the Washington, D.C. was created and now controlled by the Vatican and then along with London, the city of London. Are you familiar with the city of London? Yeah, of course. They got the uh, eye. Eye of London. There's something there. And, oh, this is so good. The Vatican, the City of London, and Washington, D.C. are all separate entities within the country they reside. Ooh. Okay. Coincidence? Right? Uh, It's all public. And they're referred to as the Empire of the City. And that was a whole nother area that I I wanted to look into, but I didn't look into too much. But scroll down. Let's show the folks this picture here that can see it. So for those of us joining on the podcast, I've got the city, a photo of the city, London, Ooh. the Washington Monument, and the Vatican. And whoa, what do you know, Dan? They all have obelisks in them. So this is like in the reference to Masons and how it's yeah the secret society Illuminati so yeah and and so the empire of the, city, of the city controls these three things and actually really when I started digging into this aspect of it, uh, it uh, it's coming from British control the uh, the New World Order the Illuminati is all out of Britain man that doesn't it, surprise me well it it surprised me in the sense that I didn't realize that people were pinpointing. You know, uh, England is is really the the source for all that. Well, ever since we last left for that damn tea tax, they've always been after us. Right? Oh, that's interesting because they said that, uh, you know, ever since we gave the thumb to England, they've been trying to get back control of this. Because if you think about it, in 1866, 1871... Think of the vastness, the resources, and just the dollar signs and all of these people's eyeballs when they looked at America and the vastness of it, and they knew they could extract all of these natural resources, exploit the land, exploit the people, and just make all this money. Everybody wanted a piece of America, man, mm-hmm. okay? You've got the French, you've got the English, you got the Spanish, you know, you got the South Americans, you know, all wanted pieces of America, man, and we just, the Europeans happened to win, right? Uh, in a sense, uh, I guess, because we kind of went self-aware once we got here, the people that got here. <laughs> the other rich elite that came to America that were setting up their own stuff, got tired of the rich elite in England and fought a war, right? So don't get, don't, don't make any mistakes. America was founded by rich white guys, all right, that had no qualms about enslaving people and taking advantage and raping and pillaging when they needed to. Okay, that's how America was founded. Maybe that will get us, uh, you know, pulled. John Podesta. You um, son sorry. of a bitch. <laughs> uh, playing with fire now. Okay, so anyway... Um, uh, so the Empire of the City uh, created this act through a through a bank private banking cartel. The Roths Rothschilds were uh, mentioned in this, but when you talk about the New World Order, the Illuminati, the Rothschilds come up uh, over and over again. Um, 
the other thing, the other aspect that I caught that it was actually created, DC was actually created by a secret Masonic society called the Columbians. Hence the Ooh. District of Columbia. Dan, we, we had asked why it was called, we we'd talked earlier. What, so you why, lied. Why was it the District of Columbia? It wasn't Waffle Death. It wasn't coffee beans. It wasn't beans. about coffee. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't about coffee. Well, Colum- coffee beans do come from Colombia. Some do. Yeah, right. <laughs> they come from a lot of places, but they, they do come from Col- Colombia as well. So does cocaine. Why isn't it the district of cocaine? Right? Cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so and I, I looked a little bit for the, the secret Masonic society called the Colombians. I couldn't find much on them. So anybody who's got information out there, I'd love to hear it in the comments and, and, and point me to that. So that was another guy's take. It was, it was a secret Masonic society called the Columbians. Uh, Column, Empire of the City, New World Order, Illuminati. They go by tons of different names, right? So uh, since then, since 1871, uh, D.C. has been controlled by a shadow government. Um, I don't, Dan, I don't think it's a, a hard uh, sell, at least to convince you and I, that there is some sort of uh, deep state shadow government pulling the strings globally, right? I mean, that's, I think yeah, we agree on it. that. Yep. We may not agree on mask wearing, but we definitely agree on that. <laughs> um, and so this is just one kind of aspect of where that was created for us, okay? Um, there's other other takes on it, but anyway, supposedly it was the secret society, uh, the shadow government. So... Again, in my travels, I came across a website that said, here's proof that the United States of America is a corporation. Here's evidence of their articles of incorporation. Um, Okay, I was already there when I read uh, 28 uh, U.S. uh, 3002, whatever that's called, as well as uh, uh, 28 U.S. Code 3002. That that sold me, as well as the Organic Act of 1871, repealed or not, it, that demonstrated to me that the U- United States was created as a, as a corporation, mun- municipal or federal. So anyway, this is where you got to be careful, man. And this is something that I found completely like hogwash, man. Um, Dan, scroll through here. So here's articles of incorporation, uh, a proof that uh, the United States Corporation Company, it's a certificate of a corporation. So uh, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to read this. Uh, it's a bunch of boilerplate lawyer crap. Keep scrolling. So what I queued into, and it's on the last page here. Oh, wait, no, second to last page. Go back one. Okay. This is what this, this guy, this website was uh, saying. Hey, this is proof that uh, United States is a corporation. So I Googled every single one of these dang names on here. Uh, nothing there. There's nothing out there about these people. What I found, and I believe if I'm not mistaken, all this, oh, the post office address. Yeah. Right. Uh, this to me was just some, somebody incorporating a company called the United States corporation company. And somebody pointed to it to, as proof for, uh, that the United States uh, of America is a corporation. I find this complete hogwash. I, I just wanted to share that there's some bad information out there. Uh, yeah, scroll up there. Yeah, look at this. Uh, the, they're selling shares for $100 with $500 minimum bid. This is not... See, this kind of goes back. Business. Here we go. The business is f- from time to time to do anyone conduct business in the state of Florida, the District of Columbia, the territories and colonies of the United States and foreign countries have one or more offices. So this is Florida based, man. It didn't make any sense. Maybe one of our viewers can shed some light. Oh, so it's it, just the different, like it's actually a business. I think it's like, yeah, it's like a business that just kind of. What is kinda, the United States corporation company? Which is not the United States of America, right? right? This is just somebody that, that named it, you know. That's the problem in the, uh, in the conspiracy world. This can easily happen like this. Yeah, and this this far. person was saying, "Look, it's, it's I proved it. It is no. This is totally unrelated. It's somebody like that's probably trying to like latch on to the name of the United States, right? It's probably like I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to point that out that I found that, and that was just like you know, hogwash. Um, so boy, I kind of all over. So Dano, that's what I got, man. What are you thinking right now? You know, I didn't find that completely damning, the act of 1871 in and of itself damning that, hey, the, the, the United States is a corporation. Um, but I agree uh, as a whole that we're being, we are being controlled by entities outside of what you and I, Dan, uh, 
well, consider the United it States all government. It comes down to money. Yeah. Get rid of that damn monetary right? system. Yep. It's done with. But the people that have the money are fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. They don't want it to happen. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's going to... That makes you wonder, like, with the free energy, it's got to come from the roots and bring it out. We need a, we need an Elon Musk to say, screw it, and all of a sudden unveil tomorrow. I've got 100,000 yeah, of these right things away. in a warehouse that I've secretly built, and I'm starting to hand them out on the street. And by the way, they did that with the electric car, and they came in and shut that down quickly. Really? Yeah. If you Google the uh, who killed the electric car, there was a documentary on it. I think it was back in the 80s they did this. Yeah. Well, have you seen the vehicles that run on water? Oh, yeah. They that shut too. that yep. down every Absolutely. time. Like, oh, my God. We, we watched, I believe, on this show years ago, a video of that guy with that motorcycle in India pouring water into the oh, tank yeah, and yeah. just taking off, you know? Yeah. And they've had uh, water-propelled cars, uh, propulsion cars for since the 50s or 60s, and it gets shut down because the oil guys <laughs> buy up the patents and or... That's why I get so pissed off with some of the the, uh, the climate change talk and all that stuff. It's it's I don't want to wreck the environment like anybody else, but... There's an alternative, like, let's do that. Yeah. Instead of this, like, reduce and less and, well, you know, you don't know, go anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's on you and me, right, to cut right. our to cut our uh, behaviors rather than on them to release some of this technology that they're hoarding, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, there was one other thing that I had to say, too. Wait, now. And I f- totally forgot. It's going to come to me on my drive home tonight. I know it, and I apologize. I'll put it in the comments when I think of it. All right, if anybody so, wants to leave a voicemail... Yeah, That's tell fun. me, tell me, fill fill us in, man, because this is was all over the board. I don't, I don't have a, a solid uh, path here on this one. This one's so convoluted, and I think it is by design, like you said. But all I know is that currently the government does not have our best <laughs> interests in mind, Dan. You think? And let's find out who is doing this and neutralize them. Stop whining. One two five six five ten fifty two thirty four one two five six five ten K two D four is the voicemail. That's uh, down in the description too. Got all, all our links over there. The Twitter, the bit shoot, the library, and uh, the audio podcast. Most important, subscribe over there, folks. Yep. Let us know who the handsome one is too. Yeah, we got a hell of a competition. Yeah, right. I'm <laughs> sure. Aliens. Come on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that would be it for us today, and uh, sayonara. <laughs>